sense and understanding. It shook people up. It changed the way people thought. Gone was the idea that all species were created perfect and immutable, taken as an article of faith. In its place, Darwin provided a proper scientific theory based on facts and observation. It is much more than the presentation of simply the idea of natural selection. It is a, it's a vision of how evolution by natural selection works. 150 years later, his theory has stood the test of time. What's amazing is that Darwin got so much right. Uh, his ideas largely stay intact today. But Darwin himself acknowledged that there were holes in his theory. He didn't actually know how it worked. What was happening inside a creature's body that makes it change? But now, at last, modern science is providing the answers through a hidden mechanism that Darwin knew nothing about. Arizona's Pinacardi Desert is a harsh and brutal place, especially if you're a rock pocket mouse. They're the Snickers bar of the desert. They, they really are, they're eaten by everything. They're probably eaten by uh, foxes and, and coyotes and, and rattlesnakes, owls. Weighing just half an ounce, this mouse could never fight off these large predators. Its best hope for survival is camouflage. Not surprisingly, its fur matches the color of the Pinacardi rocks. But in some sections of the desert, the environment is different. Ancient volcanoes erupted, and now the desert is a patchwork of dark lava and light rock. But of course, a light mouse on a dark rock is easy pickings. So something has happened that Darwin might have predicted. The mice, now living on the dark rocks, have evolved darker fur. Those that stayed on the light rocks remain light. Michael Nachman was fascinated. How had this happened? To find out, he first needed to catch some mice. So with Sean Carroll, he visits a line of traps he set the previous night. All of the dark ones have a white underbelly, and presumably there's no selection for dark on the belly because yeah. predators are going, coming from Just above. Don't... This much Darwin could have done, find some mice and compare the color of their fur to their environment. But Nachman can now do something that Darwin never could. He can look inside the animal's DNA. The study of DNA is one of the great triumphs of modern science. It has taken our understanding of how creatures evolve and develop to a level that Darwin could never have dreamed of. The DNA molecule is one of the real secrets of life. It's a perfect system for storing the vast amounts of information that's necessary for building all kinds of creatures. DNA consists of one long molecule spiraling around in a double helix. That helix is in turn made up of four smaller molecules, called by the letters G, A, T, and C. DNA can be found in the cells of every living thing on Earth. The thing about DNA that I think is remarkable is that the molecule itself is so elegant. 
with a small number of letters, you can say almost infinite words. And that is the key. DNA is a code, and its double strand contains all the information to make living things grow and develop. Lined along each DNA molecule, arranged special sequences of this code that form our genes. Many genes get translated into proteins. And these proteins make the stuff of our bodies. One protein makes hair. Another makes cartilage. Others make muscle. What makes DNA so amazing is that it just contains four letters. But all sorts of combinations of those four letters contains all the information for making all the creatures that are on the planet. It's a gene that determines whether our eyes are blue or not. Another gives us freckles. Another gives us dimples. But DNA has one other vital quality. It doesn't stay the same. When a baby is conceived, the fertilized egg receives half its DNA from the mother and half from the father, creating wholly new combinations. It's why we look a bit like our parents, but also different. Another way that DNA can change is mutation. Mutation is a critical ingredient in the recipe for evolution. Without mutation, everything would stay constant, generation after generation. Mutation generates variation, differences between individuals. Mutations can happen as our DNA copies itself when our cells divide and our bodies develop. An A, for instance, can be replaced by a G, or a C by a T. This can cause minute changes that no one is even aware of. But when mutations occur in the cells we pass down to our children, they can cause big changes. Like turning a light-colored mouse dark. Mutation seems to mean that something bad has happened. Well, mutations are neither good or bad. Whether they are favored or whether they are rejected or whether they're just neutral depends upon the conditions an organism finds itself. So for the pocket mouse, a mutation that caused the mouse to turn black, that is good if you're living on black rock, and it's bad if you're living out in the sandy desert. It was that mutation, the one that turned a light-colored mouse dark, that Michael Nachman was hunting for. Back in the lab, he began the painstaking business of comparing the genes of the two types of mice, trying to pinpoint any differences. Science is fun when you really don't know what you're gonna find. One by one, the genes in the two mice proved identical. But then, in one gene, he found something. There were four places where the sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's were different. When a mouse is born with these mutations, its fur grows dark. And that means it can survive on the dark rocks when others would not. Here was a clear example of evolution and natural selection at work. I think Darwin would have been delighted to know that we can find the genes that are responsible for evolutionary change. 
And this was just one of many links that have been found between genetic mutations and evolution. Scientists can now pinpoint a range of examples of evolution in action. The colobus monkey can see in color because of a mutation in one gene. It can now tell nutritious red leaves from tough old green ones. A genetic glitch gave this Antarctic fish a potent antifreeze in its blood, so it can survive in the icy waters when others cannot. So powerful was this link between genetic mutation and evolution that an idea took hold. To understand how evolution works, all you need to do is compare creatures' genes. One might think that you can understand all of evolution simply by mapping the genes of every creature. Identify all the genes, identify all the differences, and you could explain the differences between, say, mouse and monkeys and humans. So when the Human Genome Project began in 1990, the scientific world was on tender hooks. All three billion letters of our DNA were going to be identified in order. In parallel, the DNA of some animals and plants was also being sequenced. Surely this would be a quantum leap in our understanding of how different life forms evolved. With this came another idea, that complex animals like us would have many more genes than simpler ones. Uh, here we are, the most complex and sophisticated animal on the planet, right? You might think that would require a whole lot more genetic information. The betting was on. Just how big would our genome be compared to other life forms? There were estimates that humans would have between, let's say, 80,000 and 120,000 genes. So when the final answer came in 2003, it was a shocker. 23,000 genes. The same number as a chicken less than an ear of corn. I mean, people were freaked out by the relatively small number of genes. It's down to something like 22 or 23,000 protein coding genes in, a, in, in, in the human genome. The simple nematode worm has about that same number. And there are plants that have considerably more genes than the glorious human genome. The whole Human Genome Project has been a humbling experience as we've discovered that actually it doesn't take as many genes to make a human as we'd all hoped. And it wasn't just that we had so few genes, but many of our key genes were identical to those of other animals. Huge though the breakthrough had been, the genetic revolution had opened up a whole new set of puzzles. As a solution to the mystery of how evolution works, genes and their mutations were only part of the story. There had to be something else, more subtle and more mysterious going on. We have to explain then, how do you get all these differences if you have really similar sets of genes? The quest to uncover what Darwin never knew would have to start again. The first tantalizing clues would come from those life forms that Darwin himself had studied, embryos. Look at these embryos. It is almost impossible to tell just days after conception, which is the chicken, the turtle, the bat, the human. They look almost the same. Only as they grow does it become clear which is which. Darwin wondered, as scientists do today, how could they start out so similar and end up so different? There is something profound 
about what the embryo was telling us. And we have rediscovered what Darwin was talking about all along, that the embryo is where the action is in terms of animal